Hi everyone, this is Raj Shekhar Bhagavatanath. Welcome to my series of chess lectures. In this lecture, we are going to study about opening principles. As you know, chess game is divided into three phases, opening, middle game and end game. We will try to study some of the opening principles in this lecture. First, before we start with opening principles, we need to understand what is the difference between a rule and a principle. A rule is something which you must obey and comply. For example, a rook moves along a file and a rank. That's a rule. However, a principle is something like a guiding light in darkness. That leads you to a path out of the darkness and you have a clear vision. For example, it's like good sayings. It's not compulsory that you have to follow the principles. However, following the principles will lead you to the good positions. So sometimes it, uh, it happens that we may have to violate one of the principles based on the situation. So we will try to study when we can violate or make exceptions to a principle given. Okay, what is the first principle? The first principle says try to move your E pawn and D pawn in the opening. Try to move your e pawn and d pawn in the opening. Why is that so? If you observe, chess is a game between 16 white pieces and 16 black pieces. So if you are going to fight with 16 pieces, it makes a lot of sense to take all your friends 16 pieces and go and fight. It's foolish to go or take one piece or one of your friends and go and fight with 16 people. So here, if we observe, knight is the only piece that can come out quickly without having to make a pawn move. However, all other pieces for them to come out, they need the pawn to give them some way. For example, let's start with the A pawn. If I move the A pawn, you can see only the white rook on A1 can come out. I'm not considering the knight because knight can anyhow jump without the pawn move. Let's see, if I move the B pawn, only a bishop comes out. If I move the C pawn, only the queen comes out. If I move the deep one, the queen and the bishop, we see two pieces coming out. If I move the e pawn, we get the queen and the bishop. I'm not considering the king because we don't want our king to stand in the middle of a fight because if the king is attacked, it may get checkmated and we may lose the game. So we want to keep our king safe. So I'm not considering the king as a developing move. So here, if I move the F pawn, it's only the king which is coming out. So that's a not desired action that we would like to take in the opening. So F4 or F pawn that I moved here is one of the weakest moves that can happen in the start of the game. So here, if I move the G pawn, only the bishop comes out. And if I move the H pawn, only the rook comes out. As you can clearly see, the moves E by moving the E pawn and D pawn, we can make most of our pieces come out quickly okay so it makes a lot of sense to move our e pawn and d pawn in the opening so that we can quickly develop our pieces without losing much time okay. so second principle that comes up is try to gain center control so try and gain center control when i say center the squares e4 e5 d4 and d5 are called center of the board so we want to control the center of the board why is that so we want to control the center of the board such such that our pieces are stationed at an equal distance to any side of the board as you can see if you stand in the center of the board all the sides are at equal distance so it is strategically an important location and once your piece stands in the middle of the board it's easy to go to any side of the board quickly without taking too many turns or chances. A chance or a turn in chess is called tempo. Okay, that's a very important term. So an ability or a chance to develop your piece is called a tempo. So we'll come back to that. So once that is one reason why we want to control the center of the board so that it's an equal, it is at equidistance from all sides of the board. And the second reason why we would like to do that is once you put a piece on edge of the board, 
once you put a piece on edge of the board like for example let's consider this knight at the corner of the board it can control only two squares however if i lift it a little bit and put it on edge of the board you can see it controls four squares however if i move the knight to center of the board it controls about eight squares so as you can see as and when i move the knight more close to the center of the board it tries to control more squares it, its strength is at is at its full potential the more edge or corner of the board i keep i, I keep moving my piece its strength drastically reduces so it makes a lot of sense to make our pieces centralized Okay, now that's the second principle. Move e pawn and d pawn on the opening so that we can quickly develop our pieces. Move your pieces towards the center of the board. Now the third principle which I would like to mention is don't move your pieces more than once unnecessarily. What do I mean by that? For example, let's see. White starts the game by playing the e pawn to e4. Black tries to play knight f6 developing his knight now white tries to attack black knight by playing e4 pawn to e5 so white moved his e4 pawn to e5 attacking the knight threatening to capture it in his next turn so white black saves his knight by moving it to e4 i'm not necessarily making the best moves possible in the position with the intention to show what happens by moving the piece more than once. Now white tries to attack the knight one more time by bringing out a new piece and making black piece move one more time. So black moves his piece to c5. White tries to attack the knight one more time by playing d3 pawn to d4. As you can see the white knight comes back to e4. So black is happy moving around his knight more than once while white is trying to gain some space by moving his pawns and attacking the knight. Now white plays f3 and the knight is trapped. The knight has no squares where it can go safely. As you can see the knight is totally trapped. So the white strategy was to bring out as many pawns and pieces possible so that he can gain some tempo. So when I say gaining tempo, what we mean, what we mean by that? What I mean by that? When I say gaining tempo, it means that in our turn, we try to bring out a piece to match the number of pieces that the opponent has developed. In this case, white tries to, white tries to match the number of pieces that have come out to fight with white for example we start with e4 black matches with knight f6 so there is one each white tries to move his same piece again this is called loss of tempo because white could have developed another piece in his turn however the gain the loss of tempo is negative because we are forcing black to move his piece one more time so black moved his piece to second time so the loss of tempo is negated it's equal now white tries to bring out a new piece thus trying to attack the knight and make the knight move one more time thus gaining a tempo because now black lost his opportunity to develop a new piece and he is falling behind in development white bought out two pieces while black has only one White tries to take advantage of it by attacking the knight one more time and forcing him to move one more time. So white loses a tempo, so does black. But still, white is one tempo ahead. As you can see, there are two pieces versus one. And now comes the third piece, thus trapping the knight by attacking the knight one more time and gaining time. So the time is very important factor in chess. I hope that makes a lot of sense let's go back a little so we understand not to move our pieces more than once try to move our pieces towards center of the board 
try to develop our pieces as quickly as possible without losing time or without without losing tempos yeah now let's go to another principle which says that don't don't bring out your queen early in other words i would say try to develop your pieces small to big let's see why we should not bring out our queen early let's say i move my pawn e4 and black replies with the d5 okay black replies with d5 white simply takes the pawn and black replies with queen takes d5 now black won back the material however he bought his major piece out when i say major piece rook and queen are considered to be the major pieces while knight and bishop are considered to be the minor pieces so once a major piece comes out white tries to gain tempo on the queen by developing his knight with attack knight on b1 goes to c3 attacking the queen again i may not be showing the best moves possible for black for the intention to show what might happen if the queen comes out early the queen may become a potential target for example if queen comes to d queen comes to g5 white plays knight to f3 attacking the queen black moves queen to h6 and white tries to develop another piece by playing pawn to d4 the bishop on c1 is now hitting on the queen on h6 if the queen moves to f6 then white brings out another piece gaining a tempo again on the queen by playing bishop to g5 as you can see white pieces are working as a team and trying to gain tempo on black queen if black queen now goes to c6 black queen now goes to c6 white can simply win the queen by playing bishop to b5 this is a pin as you can see white pieces both knights and bishops work like a team and finally attacked or you know captured the queen so this is the reason why we say try to develop your minor pieces first and try to avoid your pieces moving more than once and the final one which i would like to mention is try to keep your king safe most of the time they say you know castle your king to safety yeah that's a good advice for beginners to think that castle your king as early as possible in the opening so that you can keep your king safe however there are few exceptions cases where it may not be that urgent to castle and we will discuss those uh, exceptions in uh, upcoming videos so let me put those principles one more time for you move e pawn and d pawn in the opening that's the first principle second principle try to move your pieces towards center of the board third principle do not move your pieces more than once fourth principle don't bring your major pieces out first and try to last principle try to keep your pieces as safe as possible thank you i hope you enjoyed this lesson we'll meet again in the next lesson